your station. Cases of fraud or manipulation in the oil markets. New intelligence gathered. President Obama vows victory over al-Qaeda. Your voice. Definitely my news and information station. Your show. This is reality. This is the Chris Beckham Show on South Georgia's News Talk Leader. News Talk 105.9 WVGA. I'm back on the Chris Beckham Show on this Tuesday afternoon. 241-1059 is our number. And, of course, we have a lot of things going on in our community. That's the basis of our show. And, of course, one of the big issues going on right now that we've been talking about for the last several months is the issue of school unification. And uh, here joining us today from the QE committee, uh, Rusty Griffin. Rusty, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, Chris. Glad to be here. And also Walter Hobgood, who is also on the QE committee as well. Walter, how are you? Good. I appreciate you coming. Now, Walter, I want to. Uh, you actually have to do with the Education Committee. Tell folks exactly what your uh, title is and a little bit about that Education Committee. Well, I'm not sure I have a title. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually best when you don't. You can escape one of those. The, the, uh, I'm, I'm chair of the Steering Committee that's working on the uh, Education Planning Task Force. And uh, that task force has been meeting now for several months. Uh-huh. Uh, and what we're trying to do is identify what the issues are. Uh, that are facing the outcomes of our education system in the community, county, city, doesn't matter, in our community. And uh, trying to identify what those issues are and coming up with some recommendations uh, to address those. We've uh, done some really good work. We've developed a a vision and a mission and some uh, shared values around what education should look like, um, touching everything from the role of parents and uh, qualifications of teachers and just the whole works. Uh, what we're not doing is that we're not talking about unification. What we're talking about is how do we improve the outcomes for our kids in our community. And uh, we have uh, also the, the last meeting we were talk, touching on uh, early childhood development and identifying some critical issues there and things that, quite frankly, in our community we're not doing a real good job of. And I'll say that it's not necessarily the fault of any one person or school system or teachers. It's just something that, as a community, we need. These are issues that we need to come to grips with, come together around, and come up with solutions. And we've recommended some solutions coming out of that. This Thursday at 5:30 at uh, uh, S.L. Mason on Gordon Street, uh, the committee will be meeting again, and this time we'll be talking about uh, middle school and high school education curriculum and issues facing the outcomes of uh, high school graduates and and what are some issues that we can deal with as a community to uh, to help improve the outcomes and these meetings are open to everyone they're open to the public uh, right now we've got uh, parents and teachers uh, from both school systems uh, that are participating in it we've got business people uh, we've got some very dedicated uh, conscientious people that are interested in uh, doing what's right uh, for the future of our kids. And that's why I want to bring <clears throat> that part up first, because that is, like you said, uh, different than the uh, QE Committee's mission of uh, trying to show the benefits of unification. This is simply for the better education of everyone. And I think there are a lot of people who don't realize that that's another arm of it. So uh, and I know I wanted to certainly point that out. And, Rusty, we wanted to uh, obviously talk to you about the fact that now the um, – Issue is on the ballot in November, November the 8th, the general election. I know that was a lot of work to get those petitions signed to get those signatures. Now that you've got that, we'll kind of talk about the next step now for your group. Well, uh, Walter can speak to this just as well as I can, but uh, we're very excited that 7,000 uh, citizens and voters in the city of Aldosta signed the petition and have been certified, which is a, a substantial number of city voters, quite frankly, more uh, people that normally vote in a, uh, a municipal election have signed the petition and said they want to have this discussion. They want to have this dialogue. For the next two months, we hope to be uh, conveners of a discussion and dialogue and make sure that this community is informed about the pros and the cons and the challenges and the opportunities associated with uh, uh, unification. As Walter pointed out, uh, really this QE is about school educational improvement, improving educational outcomes. We just believe that a unified system is a better platform for bringing about some of the educational reform issues that uh, uh, we think we as a community have the opportunity to, to, to implement. 
And there will be some, I know Walter mentioned some uh, meetings coming up, including this Thursday, and there will be some other ones coming up over the next couple of months as well? Absolutely. No, we, we plan to convene a number of uh, community-wide uh, town hall meetings uh, to have open discussion, open dialogue ar- around what we have found out uh, over the last several years is we've studied many other communities in our state and around the region as well as across America that have uh, unified their schools and the impact and positive impact that's had on education and educational outcomes. And I think that the, you know, both sides and everybody involved with this has the same mission is to improve the education of the uh, kids in both the Vallejo City and Lowndes County. I don't think that goes without question. Um, and I know, you, like you said, the QE committee believes that having everybody on the same page um, would do that. There have been a lot of questions. You talk about there's been a lot of myths and things out there, just misinformation. I know that's it's a, a tough thing to – you can keep pounding it and pounding it at home, but as far as exactly how the whole thing would work. And, Absolutely. And I guess that's part of your education process. Absolutely. We, we plan to be uh, providing a lot of data, a lot of information to the community, to the city voters, and to others in the community, the county as well, to where everybody, all of us, uh, are, are better informed about the opportunity to, to vote in on November the 8th. And um, uh, like I said, uh, we believe that uh, a single unified community that gets behind and makes education a priority. Today we are basically a divided community. We have two school systems, one African-American predominantly and one white. And so we are a divided community. And, and quite frankly, we're divided as it relates to education. And if we can come together as a community and make education a priority for our entire community, uh, as we have seen other communities, it, uh, it, it leads to better educational outcomes. And, and one of the real misses out there now is that we said we don't have a problem. Everything is just fine. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I was in a meeting uh, yesterday uh, in Atlanta uh, talking with a number of statewide educators and uh, it came to realize that 40% of the students throughout the state of Georgia do not graduate from high school, that those that enter the ninth grade do not graduate. So we got about a 40% dropout rate. Also found out that 40% of those that graduate, that receive a high school diploma, that go to higher education, go on to post-secondary uh, education, over 40% of those have to have remediation in order to do technical school work or to do, to do college work. And this is just totally unacceptable. Uh, uh, another quote that I heard yesterday from the governor of the state of Georgia, uh, uh, Governor Deal, he says that by the year 2018, 60% of the workers uh, in, in America, and particularly in the southeast, uh, are going to have to have some post-secondary education. And right now, with the uh, lack of educational outcomes that we have in Georgia, and quite frankly, we here in Valdosta and Lowndes County uh, ha- are a part of the state of Georgia, sure. and ours uh, are a little less than average when you combine the two schools that we have. We actually come up less in a state that uh, actually is number 47 out of 50 states in, in Georgia. So we do have a problem, and it's important that we uh, inform our community and educate our community with the facts that this is not something that's going to go away. It's not just a local problem. It's a statewide problem. Mm-hmm. But the solution to the problem is local. And we, uh, as, as members of this community, uh, as parents, as, as business people, as pastors, uh, we have to come together as, uh, as a community and make education a priority and make sure we make the changes that are, that are necessary to improve the outcomes where we can offer the opportunity for a better standard of living and quality of life for kids for tomorrow. Now, you say that, uh, again, we're talking with Rusty Griffin and Walter Hobgood from the uh, QE Committee. When you talk about uh, two school systems, one uh, predominantly African-American, one predominantly white, and having one system, the schools won't, there won't be any combination of schools. There'll still be the same number of schools here. Absolutely. So how do you change the demographics of those schools? Or would it be transferring of students, or how would you accomplish that? that, that, that that's a very, very good point. Uh, you, you do have, we do have two school systems, and we do have a divided community. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, I think that doesn't reflect very good on people that are thinking about moving here, whether it's uh, Moody Air Force Base or whether it's retirees or, quite frankly, businesses moving into this community. They see us as a divided community. So 
if we can change that, if we can change and be unified, it'll enable us to attract more industry and also attract uh, others that might be interested in, in moving uh, to, to, our, to our community. Uh, how you reach the balance, is, as you pointed out, it's not the unification of any of the schools, it's the unification of the school districts. And what we have found uh, in our several years of, of study, that it really doesn't take away from any of the rivalries. We aren't going to mess with the right, Wildcats. Right. We aren't going to mess with the, the Vikings. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, there, there's no hidden agenda around doing anything to any of those those programs. Right. Uh, I, I'm graduating from Valosta High School myself back when the earth was cooling, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm a, uh, a staunch Wildcat fan, so I, I have as uh, much love for, for the Wildcats as anybody. Uh, but but it's it's not about doing away or changing the competition mm-hmm. uh, uh, on the on the athletic sure. field, but competition in the classroom in academics we need to, to eliminate that we need to do away with that and focus on what's best for all of the kids. Now uh, last night the Valdosta City School Board met and issued their statement that they were um, against consolidation. The um, Lowndes County School Board met today and also. Um, backed up so that they agree with the Valdosta City School Board and uh, that they don't think that consolidation is the right way to go. Um, when you have the educational, the boards of education taking that stance, does that make it tougher? How do you react to that? Well, um, I, I, I'll, I'll talk to that and then maybe okay. let Walter uh, <laughs> clean it up. But uh, uh, we really don't aren't real surprised by by that. Uh, both of those school boards were elected to do what they do. And uh, so we respect their their position and their opinion to to take the position that they should do what they were elected, in fact, to do. And the stu- school te- school superintendents were, in fact, uh, uh, hired to do that job. So we we don't uh, have any animosity or resentment, or, or, or and quite frankly, do do understand uh, their 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 position on that. We just once again believe very clearly that if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. And we have some opportunities in this community to improve substantially the educational outcomes, and, and we believe a, a unified system is a, is a better system for accomplishing that. I think Rusty said it really well. We're not surprised uh, mm-hmm. at the position. Um, we're somewhat disappointed that they took a position at all. Uh, but we're not surprised, as, as Rusty said, they were elected to represent uh, their areas on the school board, and, and they, they've currently got two different school systems. So that's where their, their loyalties are. Mm-hmm. As Rusty said, our agenda is about improving the outcomes of educational uh, efforts in our community and doing that for everybody and to find a way that, that as a community, county and city combined as a community, that we can all make education our number one priority uh, in in terms of looking at our kids in the future. The outcomes will be measured 10, 15, 20 years from now when kids are coming out of school. Uh-huh. Uh, the reforms need to occur starting in pre-kindergarten, not uh-huh. necessarily at high school, sure. although there will be some reforms that, that obviously would have an impact there. But the biggest impacts will actually occur in those uh, lower grades and at early ages, and and that's where probably the biggest need is at this point. Chris, uh, let, let me let me butt butt in and, and mm-hmm. make one other point sure. on, on your on your question there. One, one thing that came out last night, as I understand it, uh, that I was very encouraged by, is that the uh, city B- board of education wants to have some a series of meetings in the community, yeah. perhaps some town hall meetings, public forums, yeah. and public forums. And I think that's a very, very good idea. Right. I think it's an opportunity for the community to come together and have discussions a- about the those issues and and how what it will look like uh, uh, mechanically, how it will work, and what what people could affect. The other thing that, that I thought was good, if, I'm, if I understood it correctly, that they were also suggesting that they have dialogue mm-hmm. with the city and with the county school system. Right. I don't know whether the county said that in their uh, uh, press release this afternoon, but I think the idea of these two school boards, these two school systems 
having discussion and a dialogue about what education ought to look like in our community and, quite frankly, what unification ought to be uh, look like in our community. I think that is a real good thing. And historically, these two school boards have not communicated very well. They have not talked very well. They have not had discussions or planning sessions around what can we do that's best for the for the entire community. So uh, having discussions, having a dialogue in this community around education, and perhaps even including both of those school boards and educators from mm-hmm. both of those systems is a very, very positive thing and something that I think can uh, uh, can be helpful to this community as we as we as a community move towards uh, November the 8th and trying to make a decision about a very important matter, perhaps yeah. the most important uh, decision this community has made in the last 50 years. That's exactly what I said earlier. It is a huge decision. And, again, Rusty Griffin and Walter Hobgood from the QE Committee joining us. And I think that um, that's been what we've been hearing mainly. I know um, Dr. Allen uh, made this point last night was that uh, – People just don't know what the plan is, and I I think people have said, you know, maybe we would be for it if we heard exactly what the plan is, but we don't know what that is, and because it is such a big decision, as we say, to go into it without having a plan, that makes people very hesitant to support it. Absolutely, and and I I think uh, QE can... uh can help facilitate some of that, and QE can help provide resources and uh, provide a, a forum for that. But uh, I think we need the educators involved. We need the uh, uh, both of the school superintendents involved and at the table and having some discussion about what do they think because mm-hmm. uh, I, I think uh, ultimately they're the ones that uh, uh, are going to make a lot of those decisions. Sure. But we can be a catalyst, hopefully, to, to help uh, well, facilitate some of those discussions. The, the Education Task Force will be uh, developing uh, recommendations, uh-huh. and these will be available somewhere around the second week in October when we've completed all of our meetings. And, uh, w- you know, the more uh, participation we get in that, the better those will be because there is a dialogue that goes on in each of those meetings where we're talking really substantial issues that affect our community. But the recommendations coming out of that will be shared with both school boards. Uh-huh. But, of course, it's not it's not QE's responsibility to implement. It's going to be the if this passes, it will be the responsibility of a new school board uh-huh. to implement it. Or uh, if it doesn't pass, it will be the responsibility of, the, of these, these two right. school boards. Absolutely. Let's get to the phone lines. 241-1059 is our number. Hello, caller. How are you? Hey, Beckham. Hey, how are you? Oh, doing all right. I've got a couple of questions. I was going to main number one question is why didn't Rusty want the Lowndes County uh, residents have to be a vote on this? Why they go behind everybody's back and only the city do it? And the other question, the other question I have that I'll let everybody go is, uh, so you're telling me Moody Air Force Base, when they station somebody in, they're going to tell the colonel I don't want to go there because the schools are divided. And the other big point is tell me how many jobs that came to you and told you they're not coming to Vodos because the schools are divided. Okay. I just want to know that, and I'm sure to appreciate it. You have a good one, Beck. Thanks, Scholar. Rusty? <laughs> I don't know that I can remember all, all of those. <laughs> the first one was about the account, the county voters, uh, county residents not being able to vote. Uh, c- quite frankly, uh, there there are two or three different ways that schools in the state of Georgia, uh, based on uh, the law, uh, can in fact uh, consolidate the, the schools. One is uh, the way we have chosen, as we think is the best way. And quite frankly, there's been six schools, uh, six school districts unified over the last 25 years in the state of Georgia. And virtually every one of them, at least five out of the six, have done it this way because it's the simplest way. It's the city. The city has a charter. That charter was established 110 years ago. Quite frankly, I looked at the charter yesterday that passed uh, 110 years ago, and that charter uh, uh, being given up is, is probably the most efficient way of doing it, the most effective way of doing it, and uh, the way, way most communities, in fact, have done that. Um, also about the uh, how many people have said that they did not bring companies here, I guess is the other question that he had. Uh, there was a question about, about Moody Air Force right, Base. Yeah. I, I, have, I have run into numerous people <laughs> that come here from uh, based on their, their, their employment at Moody Air Force Base, and they just look at me and say, I just don't understand. We don't, we don't know another community in this day and age that looks like a 1958 uh, community with the way you guys are segregated in your schools and the way you're divided as a community. And that's not healthy. They, they throw the hands up 
and they get uh, uh, confused where they ought to live and what that might do to their property values and those kind of things. And, and that is a uh, that is not healthy for, for our community. It's not very attractive to, to people who are moving here, whether it's businesses, quite frankly, or, or whether it is uh, residents or, or others that might be moving here for either employment reasons or for retiring. And uh, we're trying to make this community attractive to as many people as we can for economic development reasons. And quite frankly, for economic development reasons, uh, there's a direct tie between education and economic development. And the biggest economic engine for improving the economy, improving economic development in our community is, in fact, education. I heard yesterday the governor make a speech, and he said that you cannot separate education and economic development. The two are tied like hand in glove, and yeah. that's what that's what we've got to do is make sure that we're doing all that we can to create the best outcomes for these children. Let me add just one thing sure. to that, and, and it doesn't address the questions uh, that that the caller asked uh, directly, but it but it does address something that Rusty just said. Um, Valdosta State uh, completed an economic uh, survey of 13 communities across the southeastern part of the United States, communities that have roughly the same sort of population we have the same sort of racial makeup, uh, they're college towns, they have military installations, and, uh, and, and these range from Louisiana across to South Carolina up to Kentucky. And uh, what they were doing is looking at what do those communities do really well and uh, what are some things that we can learn from them. And one of the eye-popping things for me was that when I looked at the number or the percentage of people that live below the poverty line, our percentage was double or triple any other community. And the only way to break the cycle of poverty, the only way to do it, is with better education. And uh, I, I think if we want to break that cycle of poverty, then as a community, we need to come together around education to do something about it. Let's take another call, 241-1059. Hello, caller. Go ahead. Hi. Your speaker seems to imply that uh, the lack of diversity and the school system here in Valdosta and Lowndes County are, is not accidental. Is, is that true? It is not accidental? Yeah, it's not accidental. It is the it is obviously the will of the people that they are diversified, that are not diversified. They're doing it on purpose. Is that is that what it's implying? When you say they, you you mean the citizens? Uh, the <clears throat> citizens, yes. They're, they there's a, there's a white school and a and a and an African American school in in his in his uh, statement. So he's saying, is this is is he saying that this is accidental, uh, the, the, or is he saying that the people actually are choosing to do this? I, I don't think uh, it's a conspiracy on anybody's part over the last uh, thirty years, but it has evolved. It is what it is, and and it's the hand and it's the position that this community is in, and I think there's an opportunity to change uh, uh, that uh, with with school unification. Uh, but that's not the primary focus. We got to remember the primary focus is education reform and improved educational outcomes and, and making sure that, uh, that that we give the kids in this community the opportunity to be all that they have the potential of, of being. Carla, thank you very much. But oh. doesn't that lend to the the implication that's saying that, that because they're diversified that they're both failing or one of them is not failing? Well, I mean, just, and I can answer this, the, I know the statistics show that the uh, Lowndes County Schools Excuse me. The Lowndes County Schools have uh, fared better academically than the Valdosta City Schools. I know the um, AYP uh, reports that came out early this year, whenever it was, uh, showed that the county schools did fare better uh, than the Valdosta City Schools. So, so the implication is that if the schools are um, melted together, a melting pot, and then that that should solve the problem. Um. Walter or Rusty, either one? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, there, no, there's no silver bullet. Uh, we, we don't think just by, and we've said this all, all along and actually for the last couple of years, uh, that uh, uh, unification in itself is, is not a silver bullet or a quick fix. It's going to take a lot of hard work by this community. I, I was telling you, referring a while ago to a speech that the governor made about uh, education, and he mm -hmm. was saying, we have a problem in the state. We, we have a serious problem in the state, and we're losing ground to, to South Carolina, to North Carolina, to Tennessee, and would you believe Alabama? And he says, we've got to fix this, and we've got to take the steps today 
to fix this, but he says the truth of the matter is uh, most governors want uh, to see the outcomes and see the fruition of their actions during their term in service. And he says sure. this is not one of those kind of issues. Right. He said this is something that the next governor or the governor after that is the one that's going to reap the benefit, but we have the responsibility today to take steps in this state and I say the same thing about Valdosta and Lyons County. It is time for us to do it on a local basis. The state of Georgia can't come down here and help us improve education. They can support us. They got good policies. They got governance. They got uh, uh, resources and ways of allocating funds and so on and so forth. But it's a local issue, and we as a community have got to take the responsibility and make sure we take action and, and are doing well, all that we can do to make uh, education a, a priority, and we think uh, unifying the schools and us having one focus as a community and a priority, making education a priority for all, all people, to educate all of our children. And quite frankly, well, particularly those disadvantaged children, if I can, if I can add that. Caller, thank you well, for calling. We want to get one more call in, but I appreciate you calling. Hello, caller, go ahead. Yeah, what's going to happen to the educators... What's going to happen to the educators in Valdosta? Caller, turn the uh, turn your radio down just a bit, caller, but that may help you a little bit. Uh, uh, what's I, going to happen to the educators in in Valdosta City School Systems when you try to consolidate? Okay, and that's the question. We thank you, caller, for that question. That's one that we've heard is on November the ninth. If the uh, issue does pass then what will happen right then to the educators in the Valdosta City School System? We, we, two, two things. We, we, and I'm going to let Walter jump in here, too, because Walter is, is chairman of the, uh, of, of the educational task force. Yeah, but, I would uh, like him to answer uh, what's that What's going to happen is absolutely because nothing, because we still well, don't have 16,000 or 17,000 yeah. students to educate, and we need all the teachers we can get. Uh, so uh, n nothing's going to happen to them other than hopefully – in a unified system, we'll be able to Hopefully, support them as a community and bring about uh, a development. Uh, and, and quite frankly, and I'm going to shut up here and let Walter take it over, but the key to education, one of the main keys is, edu is the teacher. And the teacher makes the difference. She's out there on the firing line, and she's the heart and soul of, of any educational system. And again, and I'll just say that, you know, with the same number of students and the same number of schools, you're going to need the same number of teachers. So that's not really going to change a whole lot other than I think there's been the question of well at what point would they become Lowndes County employees versus Dallas City employees so and I don't know that there's if we know that yet I don't know the um, we've looked at unification efforts in several different places and as Rusty said uh, there's been no impact on the teachers they still show up the next day they still teach and they're teaching the same subjects and, and teaching the same students. Um, what will happen over time is that there may be some curriculum changes, there may be some things like that, but as Rusty said, we still need very good right. teachers, and there are some excellent teachers in both school systems. Amen. Uh, the other things that have happened when this has been done in a planned way uh, with school reforms in, included is that there's a lot of effort put on uh, professional development uh, for teachers, and that's not just checking off the boxes on a sheet of paper to say that I, I attended this course or this course, but it's, it's specialized training to help them be more effective in the classroom, and that professional development is ongoing. And if you look at some of the recommendations that will come out of, of the Education Task Force, we're, we're working on what that looks like. And, but you've got to have – it's just like any other job. To get better at your job, you've got to go to more training. You've got to mm -hmm. keep, keep your skills up, updated. And so professional development is a key part of uh, education reform when it's done right. Again, uh, Rusty Griffin and Walter Hobgood join us today. Our phone lines are still lit up, and I want to we've got to let them go because we kept them here longer than I know that we had told them that we would. But this is a good thing that uh, our phone lines are lighting up because that's why we're going to have some public forums. That's why we're going to have things in the community. And I urge everyone listening, if you are interested in it and want those uh, questions answered, Again, uh, the QE website is up. You can get their contact number. You can get them on call. Uh, you can attend a public forum. We're going to be a part of those as well, and we'll have this discussion more on the show. We could literally be here probably till the sun goes down, and, <laughs> and we all want to have some dinner tonight. But, but again, we uh, do appreciate uh, the calls and the interest, and I think, Rusty, what you're talking about, I know that uh, people have different views on this, obviously. Um, 
the discussion is there. That's the discussion that's going to take part over the next two months, and that's why we're going to have these public forums because there are some questions Absolutely. that need to be answered. Absolutely. So. So uh, we appreciate you guys' time today. Rusty, thanks so much. Thank you. Walter, thanks, thanks for, for coming by. Me. We really appreciate Thank it. And, you. again, uh, if you want a question and answer, get in contact with them. We'll have them uh, back on the show again, and as well as the uh, friends of the Vallis City Schools group. And uh, you can call and ask them questions. And discussion is good. More information is always good. We'll take a break and come right back. More of the Chris Beckham Show coming up right after this on News Talk 105.9. This is WVG.